Hello everyone, welcome to my home. Today we're gonna to work on making a Victorian fashion doll hat. Uh, this is an idea of what we're going to do. So let's get to work. The first thing in making your foundation for your hat is to take the wire from your kit and we need to spring it which means we have to press against the wire with the, with the uh, pad of our thumb and go in the opposite direction of the curl, like that. But the reason we do this is if you don't do this, your wire can twist on your buckram and then you have to start all over again. So this will give you a nice stable wire to work with. Okay, that's good. Set that aside. Buckram. The foundation begins with buckram. And as you can see, I have traced my hat patterns onto the buckram. Now I use the original patterns without any seam allowances for almost all of this. And I'll explain as I go along because you, you get a much more accurate shape by using the original patterns. But you have to remember that you will need to add seam allowance when you cut this out. So if it makes you nervous, what you can do is mark your pattern to remind yourself of where to add. Marking for seam allowances. So what we want to do, and on your pattern piece that you have, you will have the seam allowances drawn in. But I always do it freehand. So if you just want to mark your pattern before you cut it out, where your seam allowances will go. It, it will help you to remember what you're doing. Okay, now we're gonna cut, and we're gonna cut on the inside of the line. All right? Because as you start adding to the hat, especially the wire, you're gonna add a few millimeters in size and you don't want this to get too big. Okay, now we don't need any seam allowance here, so this can cut right in. But we will need it here where I've marked. And I'm doing like, I don't know, three eighths of an inch approximately. Okay, no seam allowance on the end of the brim. Now this is the brim <clears throat> piece. And you always need to mark your center line on all your pattern pieces. And as you go through making your hat, you will replace these if they become covered because it'll really help you when you're constructing the hat. Then you need to clip. Up to the line. You need smaller clips at the curves because when you fold these up, you want to make sure you have a nice, precise curve. This area that's a little straighter isn't quite so Okay, now we're going to press these up and you can use your thumbnail as a guide to press this up and you see you're getting a nice neat curve 
along the inside edge of the brim. My nails are rather short at the moment, so it helps if they're a little longer. Okay, I'll cut out the rest and we'll be back in a minute. Finished cutting. Now I have finished cutting out the rest of the pieces. This is the tip and this is the crown. And the tabs on the crown I have pressed downward like this. Okay, and then the next thing we will do is we will sew the crown together. And you need to match the pencil lines to do this. sew this with a double waxed thread. So let me get my needle threaded and I'll be right back. So I've realized that I should probably show you the components of a bonnet before we go on because you'll need to know these these words that I'm going to be talking about. So this is the brim of the hat right here, and it corresponds to this piece right here. This is the crown, which will be this piece right here. And then the tip is actually the top of the crown, and it's this piece right here. And you will see that on your pattern it says wired tip because we're gonna put a piece of wire around the outside edge of this, so this is a little smaller than the other pattern for the tip, because you need, the wire is gonna take up a little bit of room. And then as the crown comes down, it creates these cheek tabs, which come down, um, down under around the chin, across the cheeks. And this little curtain at the back it's called the bavelet, and it keeps the neck from being seen, which would be indecent at the time. And then the rest of this is all decoration and trim. Okay, now let me show you. I have my thread ready. My ne thread, needle is threaded, and I'm gonna make a knot. That's also waxed. And try to keep your needle, your needles, your knots as small as possible. Because if they are too big, they will show through the, the covering fabric. So we're going to sew this together. Make your first stitch, and you're going to do this quite often, through the buckram. And then you're going to go up in between the threads at the knotted end, and that'll anchor your first stitch. So in that way, you, you won't be having to make a big knot on the buckram, which really you can't do very well anyway because it's so holy. And then we're just gonna sew this all together. Catching the bottom first. Just make sure that your center line, center back line, lines um, match up. I'm doing sort of a blanket stitch here, but you don't really need to do that. You can just whip it.
and then you're going to go up and down through that center back tab, keeping it secure. Check my lines. Good. One of the problems with sewing buckram is that you're going to find out that your thread catches a lot, all these sharp little edges, and you need to be, be careful because you don't want to destroy the shape that you've cut, so you just have to be careful. Okay, then I'm going to knot off, and I've left a loop when I've gone down through, and I'm going to come back up through this and then through my loop. And then I'm gonna do it again, just through the threads themselves. Oh, there we go, caught. Okay. So, there's our crowns sewn together. The next thing we need to do is wire the tip so we can attach it. Now, normally you would put on a full-sized hat, you would start attaching the brim to the crown now, but because this is so small, it's easier to move ahead on the construction of the hat with the crown separated from it so that you can get your fingers into all the areas you need to do. So what we're going to do next is wire the tip. tip. So this is our wire that we have sprung already and you need to start shaping it to go around the outside edge of the tip. Um, and it does help if you have something round like this dowel, curtain rod, to give you a little help in getting it rounded. And needle nose pliers help too. You see this is a little flat here. So we need to bend it a little. I've given you a measurement of approximately five and three quarter inches, I believe, for to start the tip. So I'm gonna cut this and make sure that you cut it straight down on the wire. Because if you cut it at an angle, this wire will be very sharp and will always be cutting through your fabric of your hat, which is not good. And using a tool to bend your wire is going to cut the um, cotton wrap on your wire, but it's all right, it'll be covered. There doesn't seem to be any way. That's why if you, you can use your fingers the most, it's the best, best thing to do. You can see where it's been cut. Okay, now starting at, we'll call this the center back. It's the center line. We're going to sew this wire to the tip. Okay. Get that out of the way a little. So I have my knotted double strand wax thread. I'm going to start sewing this to the edge. Now, you have to make sure you stay on the edge. And once again, we're going to start our first stitch by going back up through the threads. 
give us a nice stable first stitch. Now, you can't sew too close to the edge of the buckram because it'll tear the threads of the buckram itself. So go back up in it a couple of holes. And as you do your blanket stitch going around, you need to go into the back of the loop and that'll make it snug really well to this cotton covering on the wire. If you go in the front of it you'll see, I'll show you what happens. You can see that it will it will never stay really tight to the wire. It's always going to have a little lift there. So by going through the back of the loop, you get a very snug and we're going to go all the way around the tip. Oops, and just be aware that you're going to be catching your thread on wire and buckram and so just take your time, be patient with it and make sure you keep the wire on the very edge. Of the buckram. And we're going to do this all the way around. Um, now, probably when you finish this first pass around the tip, you're going to notice that your wire is a little loose. So that means you're going to have to go back in the opposite direction. And it will really um, strengthen and, and stabilize the whole tip. It'll, you'll, you'll see how nice it looks when it's finished. Okay, let me show you one near the end. So you can see we've come almost all the way around. Let me just finish this off. I had to add more threads, so once again, knotted the thread and then going up between the two threads. And as you go you can refine the shape of the wire. to fit the tip, which you'll probably have to do. <clears throat> okay, now when you started this, I forgot to mention that you should start a little like three-eighths past the center line as an overlap. And then your last little piece, just a little more of a shape. You can see that this is where my wire was. So we're going to be like 3 eighths inch overlapping that last piece of wire, the beginning piece. And you're going to, you can move this under a little because you don't want the, if you put it on the very edge, you'll be distorting the shape of the circle. So finish up. Okay. 
Okay. So this is going around once. And it's not bad. But you can see it's still kind of loose, slipping under a little. So I think it's always good to go over it twice and you will go in the opposite direction. So turn it over and start going in the opposite direction. And this is one that's been done twice. And you can see I put the little extra overlap underneath so I can keep pretty much a circle shape. Okay, so now that that's done, we need to attach this to the crown. And you're gonna to wanna to match your center lines that you've had, that you've done, you've marked out before on the center back and on the top. And I think it's always a good idea, it's, it's hard to pin this, but it's a good idea to start at the center line when you're gonna sew this on because, oh, you don't want it to slip too much. Now, sometimes you can't help it. And if, you, and if it does slip, then you can always redraw your line. And since the lines are in pencil, they can be erased. And by the way, I use a mechanical pencil because I like how fine and distinct you can get with your lines. Okay. So let me sew this on and I'll be right back. So now we're gonna sew the tip to the crown. And I've started, I've knotted my double wax thread and I'm starting inside. And then I'm gonna go back through and catch between the threads. For my first knot. Okay. Check this, it's a little off. Okay. Then, all you have to do is whip stitch. The tip to the crown. Even with wax thread, you're still gonna be fighting with the buckram. I have my, um, this is where I began and ended the wire, the center back there. get the idea. Let me finish this up and we'll be right back. Okay, we've come back to where we started. I'm going to just knot this off. Okay, now you can see it did shift our center line. 
So I'm going to redraw this. Erase it a little. Okay. And my ruler. And I'm going to match up this line with the center back line. And then we draw that. There. Back in business. Now the next thing to do is to stitch all of these little tabs to the tip. It keeps them out of the out of your way later and it strengthens the connection of the tip. And it doesn't have to be a fabulous couture job of stitching, just keeping them down and out of their way, out of the way. And you can see I'm using a long needle. I like to use millinery needles because they're very flexible. This one's already got a nice little bend in it which I like. And I do use them until they snap in half, I must say. Okay. Now I've got another needle ready to go. knotted and waxed. Then I'll go back down through. Oops. Got a really nasty snag there. A tour through. Okay, try that again. the threads, start your stitch. And back up to the top. And I'm gonna knot these off. It's really hard to knot your threads in the buckram like you would fabric. Because it um, you can tear through it or distort the shape. And I like to tie it three times, each time in a different direction. Okay, normally of my lack of vision these days, I would be doing this all up very close to my face without my glasses, so it's a little awkward for me. And just continue. Sewing all the way around. Catching the tabs. You'll feel it as you're sewing that it's getting a little stronger. 
feeling a little more connected to each other. Sorry if I'm pulling this out of view. And I'm going to knot it off to all this stitching around the wire. There you go. It's attached. The tabs are all sewn down. It's become a little more rigid, which is good. And the next step is actually is part of the um, mulling process. Now, mulling is a was originally a very lightweight silk or cotton fabric that was used in millinery, and now for some reason it covers the term of padding and covering the wired edges. So the mulling process usually and takes place after the whole hat is wired, but we're gonna do this now because it's so much easier to deal with on this scale and, and um, before it's attached to the brim, okay? So the next thing to do is to bind this wired edge with bias muslin. And let me set that up and I'll be right back. Um, so the next thing we do is bias binding with muslin. So if you will look in your kit, you will see a little winding bobbin thingy with um, some bias muslin on it. And this is what you're going to do, use to bind all of the edges, wired edges of your hat. So let me show you what I do. When you take your muslin strip off the winding doohickey, you will need to fold it in half. So I like to start at the end of it, holding it with a pin. Which helps me press this along. And also this wool mat that I use to press on is kind of nice because it holds the steamy heat so that you can just almost press it by using your fingers into the mat. And once again, I use steam. It stays nice and warm. Steamy warm. Okay. There we go. Okay. 
There's your bias binding. So cut a six inch piece of your folded muslin. And this is what we're gonna to use to bind around the wire of the tip and the crown. And you'll use the crease as a guide because you want to keep that on the wire itself. Okay. And this time we will use a single wax thread. Keep your knots small. Okay, and anchor your first stitch. Into the muslin so your knot doesn't pull through. Okay, now as you sew this, check that you're on the wire. this up a little. Okay, and I want you to sew, let's get this started a minute. Sew along the raw edge of the muslin as close as you can without going off like I did there. And as you go and you pull the bias, it'll snug up against the the crown. You can see how fiddly this is. So it really helps not having the brim attached as well. I'm just sewing in and out all the way around. Okay, I'll finish this up and we'll be right back. So I've stitched all the way around the raw edge on the crown section, and then I stitched up to the top section with it for the tip, and I put a little gathering stitch in to hold it. To the tip. So I'll knot that off. And once again, we're going to sew this down to the tip. Ouch, got my finger. Okay, so that's what we do all the way around, and it ends up looking like this. And also, I have put my reference marks 
under the muslin binding so that I know what I'm doing as we go along. And you'll also need to press this to flatten it. Now, um, you're gonna need something to support the uh, tip as you press. Um, I have a prescription bottle which fits perfectly inside. And then all you need to do, I like to put a little press cloth on it. Just give this a little press. There we are, and you need to let that dry a little bit before you continue. And our next step will be to sew the crown to the brim. So our next step will be to attach the brim to the crown of the hat. Once again, I want you to match your center lines. go and pin this is the cheek tab section so that this is a nice even line there and the reason you need to pin this is because it's a little bigger and you're just going to ease the brim into fit it's not that much bigger, but you don't want to end up at the end of your hat down here without, and then have the brim and the crown misaligned. Okay. So, once again, double wax thread. Start underneath at the center line. Back down in. And through your threads there, good start. So make sure that your lines all match up and that you're on your pencil line. And then you can go in either direction, doesn't really matter. Try not to catch these points because you'll break them down. Okay, so what we're gonna do is just sew in and out. And you're gonna do two rows of stitching. One row close to the edge of the crown where it connects. This. And then you're going to do another row of stitching right back here at the end of the tab. So you'll have two rows of stitching. Make sure you follow, you can see there's a little gap. That's the easing right there. I'm making fairly small stitches, 
fairly close together. Let me move over to this one. This one's finished. Two rows of stitching, two threads waxed, white thread, and you see it's nice and firm. Now, when you're making an adult size or a full size hat, there's also something called a head wire, which goes along this curve where the crown meets the brim. Because if you notice, this collapses a little here. But this hat is so small, and adding that wire makes it so much heavier and over-constructed that I don't think it's really necessary. And when there's a head in there, it'll help keep the shape of the hat. So our next job will be to wire the entire outside edge of the hat so that it looks like this. This whole thing has been wired and it's been stitched twice. Once in one direction and one then again in the other direction. Okay, I'll show you how that goes. So our next step will be to wire around the outside edge of the bonnet. Um, in your directions, I have stated that you should start at the center back. However, as I made more of these after I wrote the directions, I realized that it might be easier to find the center of your white sprung wire. This is the sprung wire. And I've given it a little more of a tight curve to it. Find the center of your wire and start up here at the center. And we're going to do the same stitching that we did before, starting between the two threads. Keeping this on the edge. of the buckram, and you're going to keep refining your shape as you go along. See, I can bend this a little more. This can be bent a little more. going in behind the loop. Okay. All right, I'll come back when I get down to the, the points. See, this is already starting to come apart to show you what I do there and why I'm starting at the center top instead of the center back. So I've come down to the point, the peak here. Now the reason I'm doing this um, this way first from the top is that the, um, the peaks are kind of hard to bend when you're coming from this side, but when you go down from the top, it's much easier to bend that peak whoop, in place and get it the right length than it is when the hat, when you're doing it down here first. See, it fits in there nicely now. 
see if I got my thread caught around it. Okay. And then I'm going to just continue. Now keep bending the wire to fit. And then I'm just going to continue to sew. This is a little crazy too because you have the other piece of wire fighting with you all the time. Whoop. Normally, I would have this held right up to my face to see what I'm doing. So you're not gonna get my best work here. Once again, as you get to this point, you have to be careful because it's going to want to tear through the threads. So I sort of keep going into the same hole and not really pulling too tightly and moving around the peak. adjusting the wire as you go along. And this is your center back. It's going to kind of faint right there. So you're going to end like 3 eighths of an inch past that, be a little overlap. So cut that, get that out of our way. Okay. Now I'm going to continue around here, shaping this as I go. And then I'm going to show you what I normally do is I sew this whole front edge um, with the machine, this zigzag. So I'm going to show you what that looks like, okay? I'll be right back. Let's so I've zigged this in black so you can see and it's done twice and it's really nice. It's a nice firm stitching to the buckram because you're actually also going in. I use a, a micro tip. So it's actually going into the buckram too and not just the holes, which over here it's just the holes. So you can see how much easier it is. Now I can bend this side into the shape I need. right here at the peak, a oh, little too. There, you can see how much better that is. So I'm just bending this a little tighter, slightly tighter edge there, and then finish this around here and an overlap of about three eighths of an inch. Clip straight down. Now, it would be nice if you could do the whole thing on the machine, but this area is impossible to do. So this is all has to be done by hand anyway. But 
you use your fingers and just keep bending the wire. You can see we've cut through some of the wrapping with the pliers, but that's what happens. It's kind of hard to get that sharp peak with just your fingers. And then you're going to just go ahead and continue sewing all the way around the back of the hat. And of course, you're going to have to go back, if you're doing this by hand, you're going to have to go back over this entire section again just to firm it up. And it's nice when you do that, you can also get use holes that are closer to the wire, which also helps hold it a little more firmly. Okay. Okay. So we just keep doing that all the way around. We'll finish up at the center back, and you can keep this last little tab, this 3 8 inch overlap, underneath a little bit so that you keep this edge clean. You, you don't have a bump from the wire. Okay. Then just take a look at your hat. Make sure the shape is nice. It's pleasing. It's good. Those are about the same. There we go. Now, the next step is to bind the edge all the way around the bonnet with your muslin. So we'll do that next, as soon as I get this set up. So using the rest of the um, muslin that you've ironed in, in half, we're gonna bind the outside edge of the hat now. And we just do it this very same way. I'm gonna anchor my first stitch. I'm doing this because my knot is so little that it could just tear through the muslin. And this way I'll there, stay where I want it to. Now this section right here, that's going to go over this deep curve, you're gonna to need to clip it. Otherwise it won't lay in tightly. Then it's the same process of stitching it down close to the outside edge. I keep pulling down so that it stays flat against the wire. Some people glue this in place, and if you use a glue, like gra grab it or um, rubber cement, there's not enough liquid in that to um, dissolve the starch on the muslin, I mean on the um, buckram. So it's okay, but the problem with doing that is, it goes much faster, of course, is that, um, when you have to sew through it with the covering and the lining, it's really hard. We're going to spray mount the um, padding, which will be baby flannel, to this, which adds only a very light layer of gluing, but 
it's still you're still going to notice when you sew through that the um, glue catches your needle a little bit. It's a little tougher to get through. So just keep going. Pull the muslin so it'll snug in. And one of the reasons you do this is not only just to cover all that nasty stitching on the wire, is to also give you something to stitch into because you're going to be stitching, <coughs> excuse me, the covering fabric and the lining to the very edge. So you'll have something f more permanent than the threads around the wire to sew through. Okay, then as you come up to the peak, just keep sewing. I'm gonna change and go in the next, go up the front. So open your muslin, lay it against there. And then just with your finger and your needle, smooth that down. And then stitch right through. Okay. And just follow up the front of the hat. Keeping it snug. This is a single thread too. I think I said that before. And try to stay near the edge of the muslin, the raw edges, as much as you can. This is actually quite satisfying when you get this on and it makes it look so much nicer. Okay, we're going to continue all the way around the hat until it looks like this. You have a beautifully bound wire edges. And our next step will be to add the baby flannel, which will pad the hat so that when you put your covering fabric on it, these all these little cross hatchings of the buckram won't show through, spoil the look of your hat, okay? Next step. So our next step will be to continue the mulling process, which, and we'll put muslin, we'll cover the buckram with muslin. This is your pattern page. now. On all your patterns, this you can consider this edge uh, the salvage, because that's how I cut all of the fabric along that, that direction. And you can see I've laid out how you should cut this out. Now, once again, I just use the original shapes. You're gonna need two brims, because one goes on the inside. And for the inside brim, you are going to have to have something of a seam allowance. So you can mark on your fabric that you need to do that. You need to add a little to the back, not much. And you might just want to like do like a slight sixteenth of an inch. It should fit pretty well, but depending on how much the hat is expanded, you might need a little more space. So this is your baby flannel and you lay your pieces out and trace them with your pencil. So here we go, it's traced. So I'm gonna mark this so that I remember that I need a little extra there. 
end here. All right, I'm gonna cut this out and we'll be right back. So now we have cut out the baby flannel and you can see that I just, you know, freehanded the little extra, you know, a scant 16th of an inch on the edge of the crown, which will be up here. There's no added at all. And the ins the outside brim cover of baby flannel, there's nothing added either. Just a little line up here. And you notice, here's the tip. I've, I've made sure that my markings are in place. And this is for the inside of the brim. And I've extended it and clipped it a little bit. You don't have to go all the way up to the line. You just want it to expand, be able to expand a little bit. All right, so now the first thing I can do is glue the tip flannel inside. So that's what we'll do. And this is just to cover all of the, you know, rawness of the inside so that your um, lining looks nice when it hits the back of the, the hat. And this I'm gonna glue, I'm not gonna spray mount. So I'll use a little bit of gravit and um, glue that in. Be right back. So I'm gonna take a little bit of gravit on my brush and lightly coat the inside edge. You don't have to really glue it too too well, just the edge. Now the reason that this works is that for some reason there's very little water in this glue and it um, it doesn't soften the buckram. It dries so quickly that it doesn't. Now Elmer's would definitely soften Okay, and then that just goes in there. I'm putting it with all the pencil marks on the inside because we have a very light tissue taffeta for the lining. We don't want any of those marks to show. There, that's good. All right. Now I'm going to go spray this with spray mount, and I'll be right back. So I've sprayed this with spray mount, and I'm going to apply the, muzzle, or the uh, baby flannel. I'm going to put it on with the center line showing. Now, if you were going to cover this in white fabric, I would put it all upside down so you have a unmarked because it could show through. But since this is being covered in black and this will help you see what we're doing. Okay. Let me take this off. Crown cover. Work it with your fingers to make sure there aren't any wrinkles. It should fit right along that line. So I've added a little to the center back, but I don't think I need any of it. So I'm going to cut that away. I wanted to, I don't want to overlap the flannel at all if I can help it because it just makes it a little thicker. We don't need that. Okay. Now the brim. Matching up our center lines. Oh, I forgot to do this. See, we need to mark, extend our marking of the center line onto the muslin. Okay, good. Match those up. 
pull this along here. There, that stretched quite a bit there. That's all right. The next thing to do um, if I like to I'm gonna spray the inside of the brim but I don't want to get the whole inside of the crown gluey so I'm gonna do that and then I'm going to spray the inside of the crown but first of all I think it would be a good idea to trim away this excess so it's out of my way. You don't want to cut through the muslin binding at all if possible. And what, something that's really good for this are cuticle scissors, which if Marina would hand them to me, they're right there on the tray. Thank you. Take my glasses off for this. Because they're curved, they're really, really good for getting into these tight little curves. You can see how beautifully that works. some of this excess off here. And once again, if you were doing this, covering this in white, you would want to put this on upside down so that you didn't have any pencil lines showing through. Okay, there, that looks much better. All right, I'm gonna go spray this and I'll be right back. So I've sprayed this. Now I'm gonna put this inside. Now, because we have a light tissue taffeta lining, I'm gonna put this in upside down, matching up the center line. You can see through the buckram where the center line is. And then just work it around. Okay. And press those little tabs down in, make sure it's all smooth, no wrinkles. I'm going to trim this.
Okay. There we go. The mulling procedure is complete. Our next step will be to cover the bonnet with our black file. So let me set that up and I'll be right back. This is the layout for the pattern pieces for your hat covering. Um, I didn't have any, this is all of black fabric I had left, so it's not quite the same as you can see. And on all of the pieces that are in the kit, there's a little white dot on the wrong side of what I think is the wrong side of the silk cotton file. Um, once again, I have laid my original pattern pieces on the fabric, considering this is the salvage, which actually is, it's actually, you can see a salvage edge there. So this is straight grain, straight grain, straight grain on here. This is the babelé, which we won't be dealing with right away, but it's up here on your pattern layout. Okay, take that away. So, normally when I'm doing a hat for, of my own, I just eyeball my seam allowances. But you can use the, the patterns do have seam allowances, but I, I just think it's much better to lay your pattern piece down and trace around it and then add your seam allowance to yourself because you get a much more accurate um, piece to cover with. And here's the crown, here's the outside brim, and here's the tip. So let me cut these out and we can start covering the hat. Now I have cut the pieces out and you'll notice that I have thread traced important areas. This is the edge of the crown that meets the brim and I want to make sure that I have that a, a good marking on that. And this is the, the center back of the crown um, where it meets the tip. And on the exterior brim cover, this line thread tracing represents where the brim meets the crown. And on the tip, this represents the outside edge of the pattern piece. So the next thing to do will be to, I'm going to put a gathering stitch in the center of this hem allowance, or seam allowance, I'm sorry, so that I can pull this up to fit the crown. And then that will get stitched in place. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I have put a gathering stitch on the covering of the tip, matching up my center lines best I can. And I'm gonna pin this in place through the flannel. Okay, and I left the um, tails, whoop, too tight, on my gathering threads on the outside so I can grab them. All right, more pins. Actually, let me pin this down here. There. Just going to tie this off. Now, this gets tacked all the way around 
to the baby flannel. Just be aware of your thread tracing. It's not going to fit exactly, but it should be pretty close. And make, try to make sure that your gathering is kind of evenly spaced. Because you don't want any lumps showing under the crown covering when you get to that point. You can feel the resistance from the glue a little bit as you sew. Keep your center lines centered. And I also want to make sure that it's nice and taut. I don't want any ripples. Now I'm not going to knot this. I'm just going to go sew back and forth a few times into the baby flannel. And that'll hold it because I don't want any knots showing. Okay, that looks good. Now we need to press this. All right, we need to iron this. A little steam. I think the iron is ready. <laughs> nice nice and flat now I'm gonna go around the edge can you get this green? just to knock down any bumps there we go that looks pretty good okay The next step will be to put the crown cover on. So what we're gonna do first is I'm gonna clip this it's the back section. be ironed as well. I've already ruined my cutting surface front with steam, so I might as well continue. So we're gonna 
gonna use a pin. Hold it down while I'm pressing a steam. I'm not really ironing it because I don't want it to get shiny. I'm just sort of hitting it with steam to keep the fold. on the back side. Okay, so looks pretty good. See my cutting board is warped from the steam. Now this gets sewn together and we're gonna do this on the machine. You can do it by hand, absolutely can, but I'm gonna use the machine. It's gonna match up my white pencil marks. I'm going to go to the machine and sew that. So I've stitched the center back seam. Now press it open. a little bit. I turn down. Snow. Now I'm going to just base this down so I don't have to worry about it moving around on me. to remove the thread tracings because we don't want to catch them in the stitches when we're sewing this.
All right. I'm going to remove the thread tracing. It's always good to not pull the whole thing out because you can scar the fabric. So just make little clips and pull small sections out. Okay. Do the same here. Okay, there we go. Now this slides down. Onto the crown. It's gonna be snug, which is good. Keeping our, our center back seam is now our back center mark. It's good that it's really snug up here because it's got to be sewn and you don't want to have a lot of loose material floating around and you're matching your center lines. to do is I just want to run something under here to make sure everything is laying down flat. Okay, looks good. Now they get sewn. And it's just gonna be like a little slip stitch. Get some more thread. <clears throat> Small knots, remember. I'm going to go in, up from the inside, center back. And you're going to do a little slip stitch kind of thing. And you want to grab just the very edge of the tip. 
and the very top of the fold up here on the crown. And you want to evenly space these because this does really show a little. And you want to, you know, show off your skill. I'm going to go around this, finish this up, and I'll be right back. I have finished sewing around the crown at the tip, and I'm just going to sew back and forth a few times invisibly instead of knotting. the thread then clip it and it'll snug back inside. Now we can take out the basting stitches out of the way a little bit. And I'm checking my thread tracings to see if they I need to come down to the join of the crown and the brim. They're a little bit away. Okay, it's not quite as close as it could be, but it's going to be what it is. Okay, see how nice and stretched that is. Now, this fabric, for some reason, really picks up every stray thought, so it's good to have a lint roller around when you get through. Get all the fuzzies off. It's coming from the um, flannel. I'm going to give it a little steam. good now our next step and you know it looks hand sewn which but beautifully hand sewn so that if I do say so myself so that you can you know it's it's a handmade thing it's I say even more precious okay with a single thread we are going to sew the crown to the hat Now, because our lining is such a thin, fragile silk taffeta, I want to keep all my stitches in black as small as possible. So, mm. I'm going through there. Okay. Oh, 
I'll show you what I mean. So go in back in close and angle out to the thread tracing on the outside. And you have a little, you can see it a little bit, but it's not going to be, it's going to be a seam on the, um, lining there, so that should make sure that that doesn't show. And of course, you know, if you have a heavier fabric for your lining, it's not such a problem, but still, if it's white or really light color, you don't want anything dark showing through. And I'm sewing on that, um, the outside edge of the white stitching lines. And the baby flannel will help hide some of the stitches too. some point you may need to use pliers to pull the thread, the needle through, but so far so good.
that's sewn down. Now you can see, even though we had like a quarter of an inch, not quite the same all the way around, but it should be more than enough. Now I'm going to tack this down to the back. You don't have to worry that too much about the length of stitches here because the, or at all really, because this is going to be bound and those stitches will be hidden. inside of the binding. And you can see how useful it is to have that muslin binding on the edge because I can sew right into it. And it's going to hold nicely. my little curved scissors. I'm going to trim this away. step will be to attach the brim cover. I'm just going to trim away some of this <sighs> fuzz. You also want to make sure you don't have any black lint or fuzz on the inside of your hat because it will show. All right, now this gets clipped again. Iron is hot. these pins that I'm going to burn myself.
scorched. Oh, this has to be pressed in a little more. On this curve. Now this goes on, it's very easy. Matching your center lines. And you can see your pencil mark, so that's pretty good. Okay, now I'm gonna move this down around. So we're a little off. I'm going to bring this back to the white stitching. It's not too bad. The white thread tracing because I want to make sure that we cover our stitches from sewing the crown cover in place. So next thing to do is to stitch this down with little stitches, evenly spaced, so it looks pretty, because it may show. And I'm also going to pull out my um, thread tracings as I go, because I don't want to catch those. Sometimes if you catch them in your stitching thread, they're hard to get out. So I can start removing them from here. thread, single thread waxed. Small knot. Okay. Now this stitch is not going to go all the way through, you're just going to sew the, the brim. The cover to the crown cover.
and make sure you're covering your stitches as best you can from sewing the crown to the hat to the foundation. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and finish sewing this on and I'll be right back.